pray the Lord. God is uh, giving us another chance, another opportunity. And let us pray. Father God in heaven, we thank you for this opportunity you give us to share from your word. And we shall always uh, be grateful, we shall forever be grateful for finding God series because we are created to worship you, to serve you. And therefore, thank you, God, that you give us this opportunity to look through these biblical uh, personalities for our spiritual nourishment. And we pray that you bless us again as we think about this uh, lady, Hannah, in the Bible, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now, brethren, God is good that um, he has remained good, and that is his favor, that is his, uh, uh, that is what he is, that is his nature, he remains good. And so this time we share about uh, another lady, and the lady in the Bible, remember we have started on sharing about women, biblical women, biblical figures that impact our lives, and um, God working through various people, and these biblical figures are there to strengthen us, to inspire us, to transform us, and actually to increase our faith. And so we talk about this lady, a woman called Hannah, Hannah in the Bible, and Hannah, uh, in the Bible talks about her as one of the wives in the home. One, Hannah was a wife, and two, Hannah later on became a mother. And a, a woman that was married as uh, another woman, because actually a man, the husband, called Elkanah. The Bible says had two women, and Hannah was one of them, and another one was called Penina. And the Bible talks about Hannah when we read uh, 1 Samuel chapter 1, that this man had his two wives. And what is peculiar about Hannah is that um, she remained childless. She was barren. While on the other hand, her co-wife called Penina. Penina had children. And the Bible is full of examples of this kind of women. Uh, we talk about, you know, Sarah, talk about Rachel, talk about um, even Rebecca and others. And the New Testament talk about Elizabeth. Now, women that had challenge of producing, women that had challenge of becoming pregnant. And now, Hannah is one of them. And so she was one of Elkanah's wives. She, the Bible talks about her as one who was most loved. And most loved, but she was most bullied by her co-wife. And the Bible pushes us back to what happened with, remember, Jacob with his two wives. One was called Leah, and another one was called Rachel. And Rachel the Bible talks about her as one, as the one who was most loved. And of course, the intention of Jacob was to marry Rachel. But um, it turned out that Rachel married Leah first. But these friends, these are just but examples. These are just but, uh, you know, figures that we pick from here. Now, Hannah, in her barrenness, Hannah, in her childlessness, the Bible says she was actually distressed. And as we read First Samuel, chapter 1, verse 10, following, let me read a little bit there, that she greatly, um, let me begin from 9, chapter 1, verse 9. Then Hannah rose after eating and drinking at Shiloh. Now Eli, the priest, was sitting on the seat by the doorpost of the temple of the Lord. And verse 10, she greatly distressed, she greatly distressed, prayed, to the Lord and wept bitterly. Why did she weep bitterly? Why did she get distressed? It's because of the agony that was in her heart, and this was barrenness, childlessness. And now verse 11, she says, she made a vow and said, O oh Lord God of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your maid servant and remember me, and not forget your maid servant, but will give your maid servant a son, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life, and the razor shall never come on his head. Now this is a prayer of a distressed woman, a prayer of a woman that was actually so hurting. And of course you have ever been hurt. Of course you have ever been distressed. 
and very many circumstances come into our lives and they distress us. Now, this woman was barrenness and she was really distressed. But the honor that she had for God's uh, provisions was deeper. She had a deeper distress, she had a deeper stresses, but the honor for God was much deeper than the, you know, than, than the distress that she was having in her heart. And so we have just been reading verses 10, 11, and in her, in her anguish, Hannah prayed. And this is something that challenges my faith. Many, many times people run to God, you know, looking at God because there's something good that God has done for them. There's a temptation to deviate from God because um, things are not going well. Now, one of the things that, that moves my heart is Hannah's prayerful life. And of course, actually, we're looking at, you know, finding God, and it's, it's something that actually we, we need to, to dive ourselves into. And Hannah tried as much as possible even to find God in her distressing moments. And so the thing is, Hannah's prayerfulness actually moves my heart so much that actually she made even a vow to God. And so she teaches us a huge, huge lesson to remain steadfast in seeking the Lord. And of course, okay, this is something that actually that why we read about these Bible figures, why we read about Bible situations so that we can deepen our faith into God, in God and to remain steadfast in seeking the Lord. And so Hannah teaches us a huge lesson in her response um, to situations, in her response to the situation that was. And remember, even then, when the priest tried to mention a few things when she was praying and her lips were moving. And the Bible says that Eli looked at her and rebuked her and said, when, I mean, you woman, why should you keep doing, being a drunken woman all the time? And of course, actually, there are people who will always misinterpret your situations. And now even the priest here, how long will you make yourself a drunk? I mean, drunk, put away wine from you. And in our society, in our life, you may be in a situation, maybe a prayerful person, and you are ever, 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 ever doing something that actually that may, can benefit you before between you and God. Someone can then, 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 that someone can uh, misinterpret, can misrepresent uh, your facts. So, my brothers, even when Eli did rebuke this woman, she had honor, she had respect, and she was not deviated. And this is the lesson that I pick from here. She was not moved from her point. Now, there, will, there may come people who may want to move you away from your focus, point of focus. Never be deviated. Remain focused. And Hannah gives us a lesson here to remain focused that even then she remained respectful, she remained honoring. And this is the point that actually, also another point that actually I find from, from this lady. And in verse 15, she does answer Eli, No, my Lord, I'm a woman oppressed in the spirit. I have drunk no wine, nor even in a, in a strong drink, but I have poured out my soul before the Lord. And this is something that I want to ask us, that things that can come wanting to deviate us, but let us continue powering our heart to the Lord. And the reason why we keep you know, diving ourselves into scripture the reason why we keep reading, so that we get encouraged, we get energized in these matters, and so we can move on. And so, friends, the Bible does mention that because of her insistence, because of her persistence in the prayer and the trust, God remembered her. And this we read in, in the verses 19 to 20, that God remembered her, and God gave her a baby boy. She became pregnant by her husband, Elkanah. And the name is Samuel, of the boy that she received. And Samuel in Hebrew is pronounced Shemuel. Now, Shemuel, Shemuel means heard of God. Of course, God has heard our prayer. And you remember all Hebrew names, like I mentioned at one time, and I still mention it, that all Hebrew names have meaning. Shemuel means God has heard. And I pray that God will hear your prayer and this Shemuel Agestia will be in you. And this is something that I wanted to, to live with you. Shemuel, God hears prayer. And even Hannah, the name itself, Hannah means God is favor, means grace. And this is something that we need to pick, 
that God is, we survive by God's grace. We are there by God's grace. We are there by God's favor. And so I pray that God's favor will rest upon you and your family. And Hannah leaves us great, great, great lessons in our lives. And this is something that I shared, that I wanted to share with you. And of course, we have other women that I have already mentioned. Sarah is one of them. Another one is Rebecca. Another one is Rachel. And situations were so hard. And you know what it means not to have a baby uh, when people get married. Of course, it's a very, very challenging thing. But Hannah trusted God without doubt. I pray for you that you remain trusting God without doubt. And when God answers, when God answers, pray the Lord. In chapter 2, Hannah sings a song of praise and no, she delivers her song of thanksgiving to God. You, you will read it in First Samuel chapter 2. She praises the Lord. Now, will you praise the Lord because of what he has done for you? Thank God for something that he has done for you. And then finally, uh, one thing that actually I find, Hannah, she never forgot the promise that she made. When she said, like I read for you, that I will dedicate this child to you. She made a vow. And in Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verses 4 to 5, the Bible says that when you vow a vow to God, do not delay paying it, for he has no pleasure in fools. Pay what you vow. It is better that you should not vow than that you vow and not fulfill it. Friends, Promises, promises, promises. Many times we have broken our promises, but Hannah is challenging us this moment that when you make a vow, Ecclesiastes 5, 4, 5, that fulfill your vows, fulfill your promises. Now, promises everywhere, promises in marriage, promises, you know, to before God in the church. You get saved, you are making a vow before God. You are getting married, you make a vow before God, but many times you have broken them. Now, Hannah challenges us. Hannah challenges you that fulfill what you vow. And indeed, when the boy was born, three months thereabout, and after winning the boy, you know, time came when she was breastfed. I mean, he was breastfed. And after winning, he was taken for God's service. And this is something that I desire, that actually we fulfill our vows with the people that we have made vows with, and even above all, with the God. And so, in Matthew 5, 7, 37, let what you say simply be yes, and if it is no, let it be no. He says um, that you must have simplicity when we are dealing with matters of vows, when we are dealing with matters of making promises. And so, my friends, may God bless you and watch over you. That Hannah leaves great lessons for us. She fulfilled her promises, and may God bless you as you fulfill promises before God and before the people that you make that you make promises with. Hannah, a prayerful mother, and entrusting our children before God. Hannah did. Will you entrust if you're a parent, entrust your children before God? And may God bless our children growing up in the knowledge of God and in the fear of the Lord. And so Hannah leaves us great lessons and will continue studying more. I may not exhaust everything, but may God bless you as you continue thinking and studying about Hannah, the mother in the Bible and the wife in the Bible, trusting and believing in God in all situations. And may God answer you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <music>